Stuff. Thanks a lot. Well, Thank great to meet you again, Emma. Yep. Um, so recently, I've seen a few of your shows. Um, uh, uh, once you said that you know you're one of the few that embody the punk rock spirit. Mm -hmm. Is that something? Who else would in this day and age, or um, who has done? Oh really? Very few. I mean, I don't really know. I don't really. I was always on the outsider anyway. They never really considered I was punk rock or new. They called me post punk, new wave, new romantic. I, you know, we we had them in the answers sort of punk rock band, and that was it. Um, not really. I, you know, I suppose Paul Weller's still around, uh, doing his thing. Buzzcocks is still around. I don't know about Susie. I don't know. You know, I, I really don't know. I mean, in terms of actively making. And an impression on the charts has got to be probably Weller. He's the only one who's still consistent. He's been very consistent. Um, he's kept going through thick and thin. Survived the jam, got out of that. And yeah, yeah. thing got out of that. Blah blah blah. You know, and, you know, move forward. Um, outside of that, it's a bit kind of uh, pastiche, really. You know. Oh, on on stage, what um, what you always you. I don't know, if you have to try to be something, I suppose you're just trying to be out of man. Stupid question, really. But um, what, what is it you want to give to the crowd, to the audience? I just want to sing the songs in tune and just <laughs> look good and entertain them and uh, please them, seduce them, terrify them, make them go home thinking they've never seen anything like that before and hold that memory with them for the rest of their lives, which is a tall order, but it's something that I did when I saw Sinatra or Sammy Davis Jr. or Liza Minnelli or Anne Margaret or, you know, you know, the great performers that you aspire to the great light in football. I saw Pele play, I saw Eusebio, I met George Best. You know, I worked with Sir Eduardo Palazzi, the artist, Alan Jones, I met him recently. These are people who you think are better than you. You know they're better than you, so you have to aspire. It's not jealousy, it's yeah, no. a period of imitation, then you go, you, you, there's always somebody better than you, and you know it, so you always have that aspiration. When you start thinking, I'm the governor, then you know, uh, if you're under like 65 or 70, you're just having a laugh. You know, so. Is Um, yeah, so the, the new album, well, sadly great on stage, Boz Bora. So the new album's been written with Boz Bora and uh, Chris McCormack. Yeah, sort Chris of is in the band now. Yeah, I saw it first time we played, we just had a chat. Yeah, he's just been in great. the group like a week, not even a week, three days. Um, and that's a great addition because he was, I was just lucky. We've also got the Who's Sound Man, which is great. Uh -huh. So we've got a good, bloody good uh, team. What, what, what's Boz then today? Wasn't Boz is working with Morrissey. Oh yeah, of course. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, Morrissey, and, and I knew that already. Boz was uh, <coughs> so, me, only ever, only ever like guesting um, and, and, and turning up and helping along because he loves he loves playing the stuff. It's great to have him on stage, but I always knew he was gonna do Moz whenever Moz was doing his next thing. Moz is, you know, gonna be before. So I, I was expecting that. But then um, Tom and Tom Edwards actually had to other commitments, which didn't fit in with mine, so he moved on and then we got, fortunately, um, Chris McCormack was available and joined the band. So now it's um, three girls, three boys and me, so it's <laughs> a nice even balanced and there are a bunch of good kids. I'm, I'm, they're young and they're enthusiastic and they are um, got a lot of energy and it helps me a great deal and they really care. So. And so Adam Ant and the Blue Black Hazar marrying the gunner's daughter. Mm. Mm. I mean, now you showed me the, the picture that he came from and it's going to be a gatefold. Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah, what, what, when is that, you know, your actual, if you had to sort of sum it up in an album, what you wanted to show in that album, mm -hmm. what would it be? I think just answering the perpetual question of what happened, what has been your experience for the last 15 years, it's wonderful. Um, what artists do you still love? Who's influenced you? Um, what you 
think of the current scene, what you think of yourself, weakness, strength, stories, family, friends, all summed up in a in an album, you know. And I, I'm deliberately being provocative by saying I'm going to do downloads because I don't want you, this ain't this this record is not for earplugs and a and a laptop. It's not for a mobile phone. I don't care about that. And a proper system. So I don't care about that. You know, everybody's got. A, you know, if you haven't got a if you haven't got a stereo, I think if you've got kids, you owe it to them to play them a vinyl disc in their lifetime. Because once they hear it and they get into it, they will, I think, never get over that experience. It is such a wonderful experience. And the, the traditional is definitely coming back. And I don't like the people that invented the internet. I think if you look at them, they're geeks and they love it. They want to, they want us all to be Trekkies. And I think the Trekkie mentality is just abhorrent. And it encourages children to sit in a room, not move, look at a screen and get fat. And that is exactly what is happening. And no one cares. I do. I've got a daughter, so I don't want that. I don't want her to be looking at an iPad. I want to go to the library, get a book, order it, take it home, read it, cherish it, take it back. And that's tradition. Same with music. I want real records, real people. Plug in and play. I don't, I'm tired of karaoke. No, no, I'm sure. With, with this um, this uh, showcase you just did, mm. fantastic by the way, mm -hmm. you didn't play any, any sort of, you know, in any great respect, any, anything from uh, the new album? Because we aren't ready and because this isn't a new... You see, for me to... I've, I've, my album's been finished for six months. Yeah, my new album's in because we spoke. Um, but you've got to... After 15 years, you have to remind people who you were, you can't go under the assumption that everybody remembers you because there's such a lot of traffic in every day, there's every week there's new bands and there's you know, a whole other generation of music. And I don't, I really want to get the best out of my songs because I'm always searching for more with my songs because my songs were written and created in the studio and the studio conditions, therefore they're hybrids, they are no, they're not. You know, thank you. Thanks very much. Thank you. They're not. Um, they're not. They're all played, but they're all kind of teased, experimental. You know, loops. Um, and to reproduce that sound live is is not impossible. I mean, there's 18 tracks of drums on Kings of the Wild Frontier. That's you can't do 18 tracks of drums live, but you can sample 18 tracks of tracks of drums, and you can cheat. And I saw a kid the other day who's one of the X Factor winners or whatever, remain nameless, and I just saw, you know, guy had a laptop and the so you know, the four songs were there and it's a laptop. He's, that's karaoke. I don't care what you say, that is miming. And I don't really buy that. So forgive me if I'm hard on this, but um, you come and see me, you're gonna see sweat and you're gonna hopefully feel it. Because I don't care who else you see that year, it doesn't matter to me. Because I'm a very competitive person, I want people to come away with an experience. You know, and come away with like, you know, well, how did he do that? Well, you know, and, and I'm not a young man, I'm 56, so I'm not, I'm glad I'm 56. Because it's a good example to people who have sort of kind of give up on the whole idea of, you know, staying in shape or staying fit to do their work and succumb to a lot of the temptations that surround music people, which is obviously drink and drug, primarily drug. And two of my, you know, I mean Matthew Ashman passed away because of primarily because of drug mm. use and I had a drummer who was a haemophiliac uh, in Bazooka Joe, Mark Tanner passed away because all haemophiliacs who see blood, it was infected with hepatitis C, so I'm doing some other boy George next week. At the um, uh, jazz cafe, we're doing hepatitis C. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So these things are sort of coming, coming round, and it's my duty to kind of make people aware of them. Yeah, because you, you always said though in the past that you'd never sort of mix uh, politics and music, but no, obviously not. now with even yourself, obviously bipolar, you yeah, wanted to yeah. raise that, that issue last time we spoke. You were saying, yeah. you know, put up another sort of platform yeah. that people should be talking about this. Is that still it your, is, your it feeling? Is, yeah, I mean, I did a thing with. Um, What's his name? John. What was that interview this morning? John Humphreys. John Humphreys. Right? John Humphreys is a hard character. He makes music. He makes 
I mean, politicians are scared of John Humphreys because he don't let up. Mm -hmm. He does not let up. And I had to do an interview, very, very uh, deep interview about mental health because it's like talking to a junkie about drugs. And I, but I, I feel there's, you know, a very, very serious, serious problem in this country or any country with antidepressants. And it affects everybody and it is, surrounds itself by being a taboo and by being a sense of guilt and by the government just like phoning it in and giving people very, very strong mind-altering drugs prescribed because they don't kill you, but they, they, they certainly kill your spirit and they kill your <coughs> mentality. So it's my duty when the time's right, after I finish doing what I do, which is making music and making money, to address that. But I don't want to address it with people who can't change it, so therefore, we got to do it with the politicians, so therefore I have to become a political animal, but I don't really respect a lot of politicians because I don't think they're respectful. So I'd rather deal with the people who are not paying the money out to make it work. So I want to speak to the people with the budgets, because I know the figures and I know the details and I know what they do and they haven't got any excuse. So. If they got the guts, they'll sit around the forum with David Dimbleby, someone sensible, and try and tell me, try and explain to me why um, they got to justify, in my view, purgatory. Worse than hell, purgatory that's happening, but well, what as we speak now? And it's happening, and I've experienced it, and it's wrong. I don't think it's no, right. no, I think, I think it's right that you're raising these issues, and, and thanks a lot for talking sort of to us. Is there anything you'd like to say to, to Music News uh, yeah. watchers? Buy my record and come and see my shows. Come and see the Blue Black Bizarre Tour in May, June, um, in a theatre near you, and um, you'll, have your, you'll have a fun evening. I'm sure you'll have. Brilliant. Thank you very much, Alan. Cheers. Thanks, Marco.